Hello everyone and welcome to another review video. This time I thought of going down the classic route and which Formula 1 car is more of an icon of the classic era than this Tyrrell P34. The model car is made by Exoto in scale 1 18th and this is the version as driven by South African Jody Schechter to victory at the 1976 Swedish Grand Prix. The 76 Formula 1 season is famous of course for the Lauda Hunt story, but for a lot of Formula 1 fans it's also the year in which the iconic Tyrrell P34 made its debut. It's not too hard to see why it's such an icon with its six-wheeled configuration, and in fact the car has been named the most recognizable vehicle of all times in motorsports. The P34 was the brainchild of designer Derek Gardner. He had been hired by Ken Till back in 1970 to design and build a car for the eponymous team. This would be the first in-house car for Uncle Ken, having used the Matra and March chassis before. Their first seasons together were very successful, with a title double in 1971 and another driver's title in 73, both times with Jackie Stewart behind the wheel. Till, however, failed to reach those heights again and in fact was on a slow decline after the 73 season. They had just lost François Sever, who was groomed to be Jackie Stewart's successor at the team, and Sir Jackie himself had already planned to quit Formula 1 at the end of that season. Although they found decent replacements in Jody Schechter and Patrick Depailler, and they won a handful of races the following years, it wasn't until late 1975 that Till again marked the spotlights. When the team unveiled their new car for the 76 season back in late 75, no one could believe their eyes. Designer Derek Gardner had come up with a six-wheeled car. Most onlookers thought it was a publicity stunt, but a few weeks later this Tyrrell codename Project 34 took to the track at Silverstone. The idea behind the design was actually quite logical. The wheels of a Formula 1 car are a huge aerodynamic blockage still to this day and make for a lot of drag. The concept behind the P34 was to tuck in the front wheels behind the front wing and to clean up the airflow leading to the rear wing and thus create less drag. This meant it needed smaller wheels, which would then reduce the contact patch to the ground and therefore grip. So to compensate for this loss, Gardner opted for a double set of wheels at the front to double up the contact patch. After a few small redesigns, the car made its debut at the 1976 Spanish Grand Prix with De Paillet and immediately proved competitive. De Paillet praised the car continually, but lead driver Schechter was unimpressed. Ironically, it was a South African who led the car to a 1-2 victory at that year's Swedish Grand Prix. Schechter also took pole at Anderstorp, but it was Andretti's Lotus who took the lead at start. However, the American was to be penalized 60 seconds for a jump start, but that didn't matter anymore when the Lotus engine failed on lap 46. Both Tyrrells then cruised to the finish, the six-wheeled car being perfectly suited for the smooth Anderstorp surface and its long corners. It proved to be the first and immediately the last win too for the P34. In fact, no six-wheeled F1 car has won a race anymore after that. This was mainly due to the FIA prohibiting Formula 1 cars to have more than four wheels after a lot of teams started to experiment with different layouts. Jody Schechter left the Tyrrell team at the end of 76, insisting that the six-wheeler was a piece of junk. Designer Derek Gardner also left, never to return to Formula 1 again. The car later struggled to stay competitive, mainly due to the increasing weight of the P34B spec. Tire supply Goodyear also stopped development of the small 10-inch front tires, which were only made for the Tyrrell team. A last-ditch attempt of saving the P34 with a wider front track to improve handling was then made in late 77. This however nullified the whole concept of the smaller front wheels, with the tires now out of their original hidden position. The car's successor, the Tyrrell 008, had again a conventional four-wheel layout and the Tyrrell P34 has still a cult following and is a very popular attraction in classic Formula 1 races or demo events like the Goodwood Festival of Speed. Exoto was the first brand to release a 118 scale model of the P34 back in 1997 already and they made several versions ranging from the Swedish Grand Prix winning car to uh, driverless versions, Japanese Grand Prix versions with uh, rain tires and different rear wing end plates for the Schecter car, and early 1977 versions of De Paillet and Pettersen. A special fantasy aluminium polished version was also made. True scale miniatures later made the same models again basically, 
They also made the presentation model from 1975 with a tall airbox and different nose. And these TSM models had opening parts and removable wheels and were even more detailed than the Exoto models. Mind you, the TSM model came out in 2010 I believe, so given that they had 13 more years of model making development, it shouldn't come as a surprise the TSM models are more detailed. Other brands Spark and GP Replicas have joined the P34 club now with their own releases of the late 1977 versions of the car. The GP Replicas model is the only one to be modeled after the last iteration of the six-wheeler with its wider track at the front. Spark, however, will also release this version of the wider P34 later this year. Now, I bought my model here quite a long time ago when only Exota had released the P34. The choice of Schecter's Swedish Grand Prix car was easy, as it was the only race win for the six-wheeler, although I would have maybe have preferred the Payet's version, as I think his helmet looks much better. But yeah, I mean, you can't have it all. I actually also own the 75 presentation model from TSM, but in the end I decided the Schecter Exoto version was the most iconic of the two, so that's why I kept this one. Packaging wise then, there's nothing really special going on. The model normally comes in the typical Exoto double box packaging with the uh, white auto box and the black and grey checkered Exoto branded inner box. The model I bought only had the inner box. Inside the car itself then is set in a styrofoam clamshell. On the top part, the type of the model is embossed on it. There's no base included like with the Spark or GP Replicas versions. The first impressions you get from the model are rather good. As is the case with most Exoto models, there is so much detail on the model car that you don't really know where to look at first, although in this case the four small wheels at the front of course uh, grab your attention immediately. The whole model oozes quality with its open engine bay, the beautifully crafted figurine and the small details everywhere basically. It looks like uh, Exoto have really nailed this one. Let's have a closer look at smaller details then and we'll start with the wheels at first as they are of course the center of attention here. The front wheels look great and have the tire designation codes embossed on them. The three spoke small rims look nice with the red colored central locking wheel nuts. There's also a small tire valve in the rims and you can see the brake details through the spokes. The wheels then also rotate and all four wheels turn simultaneously. The rear wheels then look enormous in comparison. They also have the embossed tire designation on it. And the tread of the tire also has these uh, wear indicators in them per tree. And this is also the case on the fronts of course. The rims of the rear tires are completely enclosed and also have a small tire valve. As per usual, I added the uh, extra sidewall markings and some aluminium foil in the rims to replicate the wheel weights. The front suspension then is uh, quite simple. You can see the springs in the suspension and some uh, hoses that are actually very fine spring wire. On the bodywork then you can spot some nice rivet detailing and uh, you can see that they numbered all four wheels on the car. Moving on then to the cockpit, one of the first things I noticed are these uh, little windows in the sides of the cockpit and this was needed for the drivers to see where they place the front wheels on the track. With a smaller wheel diameter they were of course harder to see over the sides of the cockpit compared to normal wheels so this was a bit of a compromise. And these windows also varied in size from race to race with some bigger variants also seen during the 1976 season. The figurine inside the cockpit looks really good. Exoto made some great looking figurines it has to be said. The helmet has the correct shape more or less and uh, a see-through thin plastic sheet visor that can be opened and closed. The face of the driver then is also really well done. On the side of the helmet there is even a life support tube added that uh, leads to a small oxygen tank in the engine bay. The typical fireproof necker Jody always uh, wore attached to his helmet is nicely replicated too. And the fabric seat belts look great with the uh, photo etched buckle details added to them. 
The dashboard is really nicely detailed too, with visible dials. The steering wheel looks nice and the hands of the driver are also very nicely modeled. The gear stick is visible too on the right hand side of the driver. And on the outside of the cockpit there is this bulge on the right to allow the driver to move the lever around. The mirrors then have this nice uh, looking special aerodynamic shape. Behind the driver then there is the fuel tank with this small headrest on it and the roll hoop towering over it with the inlet for an oil tank uh, behind. On both sides of the cockpit there are also openings for what I presume are water cooling tanks. But yeah, the cockpit is really nice and uh, yeah, is a real piece of art, I think. Behind the whole cockpit area, the venerable Ford DFV Cosworth V8 is almost uh, entirely visible as this version of the car didn't have the airbox intake, so the engine is uh, more or less left exposed. And Exoto did a great job on it, as you would expect. The mesh on the velocity stacks or trumpet is really refined and immediately catch your eye. The engine block itself then is beautifully crafted and there is a myriad of wires running across the engine bay. The long rear suspension arms are also visible attached to the back of the monocoque cockpit. The gearbox and the drive shafts are visible too as are the onboard uh, brake discs and calipers with these big cooling intakes. Next to the rear wing support pillars, there's this big cooling radiator that leads to the gearbox. In between the wing pillars, there's a small structure that houses the rear light and the exhausts uh, exit either side of the wing pillars then down at the bottom. The radiators on the side of the side pods in front of the rear wheels look really good. Uh, the very nice photo etched mesh looks great, but uh, is in fact not entirely correct. The real life car had black radiator grills, so this one, although it looks great, is not correct, even though funnily enough it actually looks better like this, I think. Behind these uh, radiators, there are actually some uh, smaller secondary grills, which you uh, can only note when looking uh, at the model from the bottom up. These photo edge bolts then next to the radiator give the model something a little extra. The whole engine bay and the back of the model are very detailed and uh, well look very impressive I think. Let's move on to the wings of the model then. The front wing is shaped like some kind of snowplow or bluff nose as it is referred to on the car's original drawings. And this type of nose wing was actually quite typical of those times. The small uh, strengthening rods on the splitter, uh, it's a very nice detail I think, as are the gurney flaps on top of the nose wings. And these small photo etched uh, fasteners look really good too. The rear wing then is quite uh, simple shape wise. It has two separate elements on the top. And the end plates feature some uh, rivet detailing. The thick double uh, central wing pillars look really realistic with those holes in it and then all those things attached to them. This model by Exoto is definitely from a very high standard. Even today, 25 years later, it's still the best version of the P34 out there in my opinion. Although the TSM with the opening parts is also very special too. So yeah, I'm very happy to have bought this uh, model all these years ago. It's a great looking model car and the six wheeler really adds something very different to the collection. So this was my review of the Exoto Tyrol P34 in scale 118 from the 1976 Swedish Grand Prix as driven by South African Jody Schechter. I'd like to thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like down below to help out the channel so that I can keep making these videos for you to enjoy. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see you soon in the next one.